Back in follow-up segment tonight, as we reported last night, the president took his family to Easter services at the Shiloh Baptist Church in Washington. That is the home of Pastor Wallace Smith, who is a race activist. And indeed, Pastor Smith made racial comments during his sermon in front of the first family, saying his grandson's first words might be that he was three-fifths of a citizen in the original Constitution. As we pointed out in the Talking Points memo, most Americans believe America is a noble nation, but do not believe President Obama thinks that. Joining us now from San Francisco, Reverend Amos Brown, the president of the NAACP branch in that city. Well, Reverend, first of all, do you know why, or do you have any kind of an educated guess, why the president went to the Shiloh Church, and was it a wise decision? Well, why did uh, Ronald Reagan go to Shiloh? Why did Bill Clinton go to Shiloh? Shiloh is a great and historic church, and uh, I think that is ludicrous for anyone to make an issue over President Barack Obama going to Shiloh Baptist Church. Well, you know, though, do you know Pastor Smith personally? I know him personally, and he was trained in the same church that I was okay, trained Okay, that's in. good. I'm glad. I'm glad you know him. Yes. Because he is an activist. He is a racial activist. And, and indeed, you know, when he made his sermon on Easter Sunday, he brought up the Constitution's flaw. And, uh, you know, people are saying, well, listen. But, Bill, we're, that, that's, a, that's a part of our history. It's in our but DNA why do it, as why a nation. Why do it in the context of Easter Sunday, particularly when you know Reverend Wright and the history of all of that, and how much that damaged the president? The prophetic preachers in this African American tradition are just telling the truth to this nation and to the world about what has been our past. Yes, we've had some good things to happen in our past, but I think that it is a state of being like a drug addict for America to act like that racism is never a part of our historical and social DNA. I don't think we should deny it either, but I think it should be put in context. Does it trouble you, Reverend, that f only 43 percent of likely voters believe that President Obama sees his country as noble? Does that trouble you? It does not. I know Mr. Obama, and he believes in this country, and uh, he's loyal to this country. And I think people who take issue in this fashion uh, have an agenda that's not the American that's an agenda. Awful lot we of ought people. to be about the... That's an awful lot of people but, who don't think that he thinks. And see, what I'm trying to get across is perception may be reality. If you go into a church where the pastor is preaching about the original Constitution being a flawed document, and you're coming off Reverend Wright saying all the things that Reverend Wright said. But Bill, said, that was not all the preacher's sermon that's taken no, out of context. It, it isn't taken out of it context. It becomes a pretext for the, the mess of those who are opportunists. No, no, no. It was part of the presentation. What I'm trying to tell you is if President Obama is perceived as a guy who does doesn't really think his, his country is noble by the majority of voters, which he is. Uh, well, I should say that. It's 36 percent say he doesn't. The rest don't know. So there's questions. Why, why would he put himself in that position to harm that image even further? Well, I say again, uh, Bill, Ronald Reagan and Bill Clinton both yeah, it, went to Shiloh Baptist Church. It was different, though. It was different. Okay. It um, was still the same church with the same pastor who has the same views, Bill. There's no difference. Okay. Um, but it was different in the sense that n neither Reagan nor Clinton were under fire for not thinking the country was noble. That's what I'm trying to get at. Now, we had a soundbite today well, from Donald it, Trump. We had a soundbite today from Donald Trump, and I want you to listen to it and then give me your impression of the soundbite as far as whether it is a racist soundbite or not. Roll it. If you look at what's happening with gasoline prices, where he said he has no control over prices, which he does if he gets on the phone or gets off his uh, basketball court or whatever he's doing at the time. I mean, he should be focused on OPEC and getting those prices down. All right. Now, the reference to basketball court, a lot of people said that was racist. Do you see it so? Definitely has some racial overtones from African-American young people have unfortunately spent a lot of time on the basketball court. Let me and ask you we this know then, the Reverend. jokes that have been made in our culture about blacks in basketball. All right, so it's like the fried chicken stuff and all of that because it's yes. tied in with yes. the culture. You see it as a race. Yes. Now, if President Obama had said to Trump, hey, why don't you get off the golf course and learn something about the world, would that be an anti-white statement? Because Trump golfs all the time. I am speaking in the context in which he made this statement. But it's I the same thing. Because... But still, the point that I'm making is that more so 
African-American youth have been known to spend an inordinate amount of time on the basketball okay. court. Okay, do you think that Trump, when he made that comment, had that in his mind, that I'm going to make a racial comment and I'm going to demean him for playing basketball? We are all uh, creatures of our culture, uh, Bill. And I, I think it's high time, again, that we acknowledge that America still is not a post-racial society. And until we accept some therapeutic help and deal with this issue of race, we will continuously have racial politics being played. We will still have black and white churches. We will still have more black males locked up in prison and jail uh, than there are others. We will still have the same old issue of black people being behind and the majority culture being ahead. We do not have racial parity in this nation, even though Mr. Obama is president of this nation. All right, and I Kevin. long for the day when we will face the issue, talk about it in our churches, talk about it in our schools, and receive the therapeutic help that we need to be made whole as a nation. Reverend, we appreciate you coming on. Thank you very much. Very interesting debate.